Zach, I love rugby. Welcome back to Hucker Time Rugby. And welcome back to the Six Nations preview series, guys. Right now, we are previewing Wales. Wales come into the Six Nations as defending champions, and what a fantastic 2019 they had. Six Nations champions, Grand Slam winners, very, very competitive at the Rugby World Cup, finishing as semi-finalists, going down to the eventual champions, the Springboks. But they were very competitive in that match as well. Obviously, the difference being the boot of Andre Pollard towards the end of that match to secure the win for South Africa. But what a performance they had there in the, um, the Rugby World Cup and in the Six Nations as well. A couple of big changes, though, going in this year. So, obviously, Warren Gatlin is no longer with this team after 12 years at, um, at the helm of Welsh Rugby. In comes Wayne Peebeck. Now, he's a guy that's been in and around this team for some time. He certainly knows the players. He certainly knows the systems. Um, and I am expecting for that reason that there will be adequate continuity between the success that they had in 2019 and what we can expect for them in 2020. I will say, guys, they are, they are contenders for the title, without a doubt. Welsh rugby is on a high at the moment. And I think they've got exciting times coming into this year with the selections that they've made. Five uncapped players will start there. And obviously, two of the big names that we need to discuss, uh, Luis, um, Luis Rees Zanet as well as Nick Tompkins. Now, they've been having fantastic European rugby um, campaigns so far. Luis Reese Zamet is an 18-year-old, seems to be scoring tries at will. But also, Nick Tompkins is actually one of the top try-scoring centres in the Premiership. And, uh, and both are going to give great attacking options for this Welsh squad this year. And the overall makeup of, of the squad is starting to feel like a very settled, competitive side in a number of key positions. If we look at the forwards, obviously the type 5, World-class players there. Um, number of names that I'll call out as well that have been included in this team. We'll start with Reese Webb. So Reese Webb, uh, very experienced player. He comes into this one. A lot of talk has been made around whether or not he will surpass Gareth Davies as the starting um, halfback or whether or not they will retain Gareth Davies as the starting halfback. In my mind, in the modern game, it doesn't matter too much um, who you go with. Obviously, the, the key these days is to get the most out of one position, a full 80 minutes. And with that level of rotation, you can certainly do that. Right? These experienced guys, you could interchange them, presumably, between starters or finishers. And you're going to get a very, very effective 80 minutes from that role. And I think that's what Wayne Pivak really needs to look at this year. It's going to be one of the keys to success. He's starting to build depth in key areas in his squad. And the question is going to be, how does he use them? How does he interchange them? What, co what composure will he give in terms of um, the makeup of this squad and what will the rotation policies be? To me, that is a key to success for this Welsh side. Because I look at a number of positions and you can see there is a great depth. I've just touched on nine. Let's talk about the inclusion of Toby Faletau, an experienced guy returning back. That loose forward combination to me is now looking like the most competitive, um, probably the best loose forward rotation in the Six Nations without a doubt. You've got... Um, Navidi had a great World Cup, Faletau was included, Tipperick and Wainwright we know, you include a guy like um, Moriarty, and there are five world-class players right there. The key again is going to be how does Pivac use and interchange these players to get the best out of that rotation for a full 80 minutes. That's going to be the key to success here. Then we look at the back line. So I spoke about Tompkins with the, um, the injury to Jonathan Davies which in my mind is a huge loss to this, this Welsh squad. But I expect Tompkins will get minutes, he will get his opportunities, and um, the way he's played, I think he'll do very, very well there. But you can't understate the impact that losing a guy like Jonathan Davies will have. In my mind, he's probably the number one or number two centre in the world. And mainly because of his decision-making capability. He makes the right call in defence, and he makes the right call in attack. And a big part of why Josh Adams was the top try scorer in the Rugby World Cup, in my mind, is the distribution work, the decision-making work that Jonathan Davies brings to the table. So we can't understate the loss there, guys. It's going to be a huge loss. But like Pivak says, it's a great opportunity for new players like um, Nick Tompkins, who is coming in here to the Swash squad. Then we look at other names. I spoke about um, Josh Adams. Um, we know what George North can do. Um, Liam Williams, I think you've, you've got the best fullback in Europe um, in Liam Williams. 
great on the counter-attack, great under the high ball, real attacking, roving fullback. I like his play, and um, I certainly think that he is a shoo-in for that, that, um, that, that Irish, British and Irish Lions um, fullback squad right now. Um, so, as I say, world-class players across the board here for Wales. They're coming in on, a, on the back of a successful year in 2019. They've got an opportunity to evolve their play. They've got new players here that they're blooding through. It is all good news here for Welsh rugby. The key to success, however, is going to be how is Wayne Pivak going to interchange these players and what combinations is he going to use and will they be effective in whatever strategy he is developing. That is going to be the keys to success. The other major talking point that we need to cover here, um, the draw is very, very bad here for this Welsh team. They've probably got the worst draw in the entire um, Six Nations. They're away to um, Ireland. They're away to England. Um, they're home to France, um, but they've got a lot that they need to overcome there if they want to win this. But I wouldn't put it past them. A lot of people are riding off this Welsh squad. I actually think that they come in as one of the top two or three squads here without a doubt, and they are certainly contenders to win this. Anyone who writes up this Welsh squad, you know, I, I think you're getting a little bit seduced by some of the, um, you know, the new depth that's coming in from France or the great work that Ireland, ha that um, England had last year. People are forgetting about the great work that Welsh rugby did last year. And I think they will get very quickly reminded of how good this squad is um, because I'm expecting them to be right at the top um, of the teams that are competing for this championship. And I think they will go very, very well this year. I've just outlined the depth. I've just outlined some, what I see as some of the keys to victory. And I ultimately think it is going to come down to um, how Wayne Pivak uses his significant resources and in what combination to get the best results on the field. That's it from me, guys. I've now covered every single team. That's the preview for all the teams. The next episode that I release is going to be my ultimate prediction on who is going to win this Rugby World Cup. Guys, if you like the series, please help the channel out. Like the video, comment down below and subscribe because, you know, I love putting out these prediction series um, and I'd like, to, I'd like to know your thoughts as well. Uh, if you want to see more of this content, guys, by being subscribed, you'll get the notifications. But thanks again for joining. Look out for that prediction video, guys. It's coming very, very soon and I will see you back here shortly. See you guys.